Hi, and welcome to Professor Pincushion. In this video, we're going to be looking into Simplicity Pattern 4762. As you can see from the front of the envelope, there is a variety of different kinds of vests. We're actually going to be looking into making vest letter D. And in this particular envelope, they have men and boy sizes. If you look up at the top where it says size, it says small through large, small through extra large. So it's good to know that you don't need to worry about getting the right size pattern envelope because all sizes are included in this one envelope. In order to find this pattern, you need to go to a fabric or craft store that supplies patterns, look for the simplicity cabinet, and then find the number with numerical order. We'll also post a link on our website so you can find the pattern directly from the Simplicity website. So first we're going to show you an example of what this vest looks like that we're going to be making and then we'll look at the back of the pattern envelope to figure out what we're going to need in order to make it. Here we have a sample of the vest we're going to be making. Again, it's View D of Simplicity 4762. It has the indented collar, buttons down the middle, welts at the bottom, and it looks very handsome, especially when it's paired with a very nice tie, and it'll make any man in your life very dapper. When we turn over the envelope and look at the back, the first box we're going to notice is right here at the top that says fabrics. This is what Simplicity suggests we use in order to make our vests or whatever project ends up being in this envelope. So you'll see here it says fabrics A, B, C, and D. These are all the views of the different types of vests. We're doing vest D, which is included in this group. So we can look at these fabric choices and decide if we want to use them in order to make our project. We have laundered cottons, baby cord, broadcloth, calico, and so on. So if you're unsure on what type of fabric would be appropriate to use for this project, you can always consult this box here. The box underneath is notions. Notions are additional items that we're going to need in order to complete this project. So we have thread, so that means we need matching thread in order to make our project. And then you'll see A, B, and down here is C and D. So again, these are the different types of vests. There's vest A, vest B, and C and D. Since we're doing vest D, we're going to skip this portion and go straight to this one. And it says we need four buttons. If you're doing the boys, you need a half inch width buttons. And for the men, you need five eighths of an inch butt size buttons. Then we have A, B, C, and D. So this means for all the vests, you're also going to need one one inch slide buckle. So to complete this, we need our fabric, thread, four buttons, and then a one inch slide buckle which goes in the back of the vest. So now we're going to move on to measurements. To find out what size pattern we need to cut out and how much fabric we're going to need, we need to consult our body measurements. And Simplicity has a nice little chart right here. You have the boy section here and the men section here. All these measurements are listed in inches, so you need to get your flexible tape measure and get your circumference of your chest, waist, and hip. Then once you have those measurements, all you do is find the best category that you fit in and then that's your size. So for me, I'm going to be doing a medium because my measurements all fall into this lane. So I know I'm going to do a medium. Now for the case that, let's say your chest is puts you in a large, but your waist, you're kind of more of a medium, I would go ahead and do a large because it's easier to make it smaller by just doing a few adjustments than to try to make it actually bigger to fit your chest area. Once you have that, then all you do is you know that everything in this line here is going to refer back to the medium size. So all larges would be going down in this line. So once I have that, I'm then going to look where they have the yardage for how much you're going to need to make it. And the first box is A, B vest. The second box down here is C, D vest. Since I'm doing vest D, I can ignore everything in this box here because it's only for vest A and B. So I can just go down here and you'll see here there's 45 inches and 60 inches. What this refers to is the different size width of fabric. So it's either a 45 inch width fabric or a 60 inch width fabric. You can tell what yours is by looking at the end of the bolt and it should be printed there. If you need more information, you could check out our tutorial on how to read the end of a fabric bolt and we'll give you all the information you need in order to find it out. 
once you figure that out, for my case, I'm doing a 60 inch width fabric. I just go across this line here, and then I find medium and go across and find out where the two points intersect, which is going to be right here. So what this tells me, for a medium at 60 inch width fabric, I'm going to need one and one eighth yards fabric. So that tells me how much fabric I'm gonna need. Underneath you see lining. So in addition to our fabric, we're also going to need lining for our project. So it's the same thing. You go across, you go down, right where it intersects, that's how much you need. So at this intersection point, I'm going to need one and one quarter yards of my lining. And then interfacing, we're also going to need, and it's this lightweight fusible interfacing. So the first yardage is for boys. I'm doing men's, so I need one and one half yards of interfacing for doing the men's vest. So that tells you all the fabric you need. We also know what notions we need. So now we're gonna lay it all out and you can see exactly what you're gonna need in order to make this vest. Here's a quick overview of all the supplies that I've gathered. I have lightweight fusible interfacing, lining, fabric, my pattern pieces, Simplicity 4762, pins and needles, scissors, my buttons, vest buckle, matching thread, and this is just all-purpose thread, sewing gauge, fabric marker, and the only two things that aren't here is my iron and my sewing machine. So now we're gonna start looking at our pattern pieces and figure out what we need to cut out. Pulling out your first page of directions, you're gonna see something like this. On one side, we have our images, and this shows all the different vest views. Here's the one we're doing, which is vest D. And then on this side is actually a diagram of all the pattern pieces and their shapes. If you look down here, the name of each pattern is actually labeled, and it has a number which corresponds to this number up here. So number one is the front for A and B. Now what these letters mean behind the names is it then correlates back to these images over here. So since we're doing vest D, we only wanna find the pattern pieces that have a D after it, which in this particular case, there's a D right there, is this one, this one, these three, and this one. So now we know which pattern pieces we need to cut out because we're gonna need two, three, five, six, seven, eight. And up here, we're gonna need two, three, five, six, seven, and eight. So once we have those numbers, we can then go to our tissue paper sheets which have the actual patterns printed on them and we know which ones we need to cut out. So if we're not doing vest A, then we don't need to worry about cutting out piece number one because that's only for vest A and B. So once we have all that noted, we can then move on to the tissue paper. Your pattern pieces will come printed out on large sheets of tissue paper just like you see right here. So what you're looking for is a number on each piece. This number here, number two, is one of the pieces that we need to make for vest D. You also see right underneath the number, it has the label of what it, the piece is. So this is the back. And it's for vest A, B, C, and D. So if you were unsure and you didn't have that sheet, you can just look here and then you'll know since D is the vest we're making that we need to cut out this pattern. The thing that you need to be careful is in this particular envelope, there are men's sizes and there are boy sizes. So the boys also have a number two, just as the men's. You need to look right here underneath the simplicity name and it'll say men. So that means if you need to cut out the boy size, you need to find another number two, which is somewhere printed on the tissue paper that says boys right here. So once you find it and you're like, yes, this is the one I need to cut out, you'll notice that there'll be a series of lines. Each line represents a size. If we look up here at the top, it's really small, maybe kind of hard to see. But we have small, medium, large, and extra large. Since I'm doing a medium, that means I'm gonna cut out my pieces all on this line above the medium. So all along here. The other thing you need to make sure is you'll see these little triangles. These are our notches. 
we need to make sure that we cut out these notches or make some sort of indication of these notches, both when we're cutting out our patterns and especially when we're cutting out our fabric pieces because these notches are important when matching up pieces together. So normally what I like to do is I like to do a little triangle right on top of this notch triangle so it kind of just sticks out. Some people actually cut into the triangle and create a little inverted triangle. Whatever system works best for you is okay. Here on this side where it's just a single line, this means this line is for all sizes. So regardless of what size I'm doing for medium, large, or extra large, once I get to this area, every size is gonna cut out on this line. When cutting out your pieces, you can either cut directly on the line or just a little bit outside the line, so probably right alongside of it. So I'm gonna get my scissors so I can start cutting out my pieces, and you just need to make sure that you cut all of them out, and then we'll move on to setting up your pieces on your fabric. The next thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look for a diagram that looks like this, which shows you how to lay out your pattern pieces on your fabric. For the boys, vest DNC is on the bottom of page one. For the men's, it's at the top of page two. So all I'm doing is looking at the title, which is vest, and making sure it has my letter, which is D. So that's how I know this is relating to what I'm doing. If you look at the individual pattern pieces, You'll see underneath the name, it'll say cut four of fabric, cut two of interfacing. So it's telling you out of this piece, I need to cut four out of my fabric and two out of my interfacing. So that is telling us exactly what we need to do. But the nice thing about this chart is it tells us the most economical way to lay out our pattern pieces so that we're not wasting fabric and everything's going to fit correctly. It also tells us with the numbers, which pattern pieces we're using for what. So here for our fabric, we're using two, eight, three, five, and six. For the lining, we're using two and five. And it's the same thing for the interfacing, which looks like it's using all the pieces again as we did for the fabric. Now why there's two of them here for the fabric is because this is showing you the layout you would do if you had 44 or 45 inch width fabric. And this is showing the layout for 58, 60 inch width fabric. Since my fabric is 60 inches in width, I'm going to be doing this layout. You may be doing this one. The also, what you need to pay attention to is this fabric is folded in half. So you're taking the width of your fabric, you're folding it in half. So when you cut out a pattern piece, let's say number two, you're going to end up with two fabric pieces to that one pattern. So that's why you're going to see number eight twice. Even though I only have one number eight pattern piece for medium, I need to pin it, cut it out, I'm getting two fabric pieces, then I take off the pattern, I move it over, and then cut it out again. And that's how I get four fabric pieces for number eight. You're also gonna notice these arrows, and if I bring in my pattern piece again, you're gonna see all the pattern pieces are printed with these. These are our grain line arrows. And you'll notice that they're all going in the same direction parallel to the fold here. You always want your arrows to be going in the same direction. So number five is going this way and you don't want number two all of a sudden the arrow to be going up and down. This is for a nap or for directional fabrics. You just want to make sure it's all going the same way so it all looks like it's cut from the same bolt of fabric. Also for the lining, you'll notice that one is sort of shaded and this is white. If you look at the directions, what this is telling us is this pattern piece is upside down. They do it so it fits. The main thing is that your arrows are going in the same direction. So this is with the printed side of the pattern facing up. This is with the printed side facing down. And you'll see it's the same thing here. Eight, five, and six, the printed side of the pattern is facing down towards the fabric. And here we have five, six, and this eight is facing up. Now why you have actually five and five and eight and eight and everything twice is because interfacing isn't quite wide enough. So it's just single thickness, there's no fold, and they're just cutting everything out twice. So now I'm gonna actually get my fabric and show you what this looks like for my situation. I have my pattern pieces now laid out on my fabric and before you lay it out and cut everything out, it's a good idea to pre-treat your fabric 
That way you don't have to worry about it shrinking on you later. We actually have a tutorial on fabric pre-care on our website, so you can check that out to get more information. Also, when you're laying it out, it might be a good idea to iron your pattern pieces. Just make sure you're using a cool iron because we don't want to damage the tissue paper. But once you have it laid out how you want it, you're then going to get your straight pins and you're going to start pinning the tissue paper to the fabric and make sure that you pin on the inside of your line parallel to the line. So see how I have it going this direction? I'm not going to then stick a pin going that direction, going perpendicular to my line. And that's because as I'm cutting out, I don't have to worry about my pins getting in the way. So I always want to go in a parallel fashion and I'm starting on one end, spreading out and then moving out with my straight pins. So here is my number eight. Remember, I need two of these. So I'm going to go ahead, pin this and cut it out, take off my pattern piece and then move it over to this side and cut it out again. So now I'm going to show you with the lining. Here is my setup for the lining. So it's only pieces two and five, and you'll notice that five, I have the print side of the pattern facing down. So it's essentially backwards. Now the last thing we need to do is our interfacing. Here's half of my setup for my interfacing. Remember, I need two pieces of each of these pattern pieces. So I'm going to pin them, cut them out, and then do the other half of the setup. Now when you're ready to start cutting out your pattern pieces or your fabric pieces, you're going to do it the same setup as you did before. So everything is pinned down, let's say, and you're going to cut right along your line and make sure to cut out each of these notches. It's very important that our fabric pieces have these notches on them. So once you have them all cut out, we can then move on to the next step. The last thing we need to do in prepping before we can start sewing is we need to transfer any of these marks that we have on our patterns to our fabric pieces. And we have about two piece fabric pieces to every pattern piece. So you definitely want to do it to both. Now some of them will have a size next to them, such as this dart has an M for medium, which is this series of darts right here. And then we have this one next to it, which is an extra large. You only need to do your size. So if I'm doing a medium, I only have to do this dart right here. I can forget about this one over here. Again, with this wet line. I have a medium line here that I can do. I don't have to do this extra large. Some of the circles that you'll see won't have a size next to them. Like I have a circle right here, it has an M in it, but if it was blank, that would mean that it would be for all sizes. So you definitely want to do that. So if you see any circles with nothing in them, go ahead and transfer them to your fabric. To transfer them, my easy way that I like to do it is I'll find a dot, I'll put a straight pin through the pattern and through the fabric. Get my sewing marker here, lift it up and mark it, which I've already done. And since I've done it on this piece, and I like to do it on the wrong side of my fabric, I also have to do it to this one. I just lift up my tissue paper. I still have my pin coming into my fabric and I just do it right where the, the two are meeting. So you need to look over all your pattern pieces and you don't need to do it with the interfacing, just with the main fabric and with the lining. And then once you've done that, we're ready to start sewing. Now it's time to break out our sewing directions, which come in the pattern envelope. Now we have sewing directions and then we also have general directions, which are found on the first page. It's a good idea to look over them and just see uh, the different tips. Definitely with the general directions, it'll usually state what the seam allowance is going to be. In this particular case, our seam allowance is going to be 5 eighths of an inch, which anytime it tells you to do a seam, that's what you're going to do it at. It'll tell you differently if it's for whatever reason it's going to change. Up here at the top, you'll see there's a fabric key guide. This is great for reading the picture guide we have down here. Right here, which is more of a solid color, that means that you're looking at the right side of the fabric, such as in this case. If it's white, you're looking at the wrong side of the fabric, such in this case right here. Interfacing kind of has these little pound signs on them and the lining is polka dot. So that's definitely helpful in reading this part down here. Here we're getting to the actual directions. You'll have usually a picture image on the left side and then written directions on the right side. So these are numbered and each number goes then with the picture. So here I have step number one. 
it's a written direction. I usually like reading it and then I'll reference the picture and I can figure out what exactly it's telling me. So we're gonna start with number one. And before I start, you just wanna make sure sometimes there's multiple projects in one envelope that you're using the right directions. So here it says vest A, B, C, and D. So I know I can start here with number one. If this said tie, then obviously I'm looking at the wrong directions if I'm not making the tie. But we're, go we're in the right spot. So we're gonna start with number one. And number one says stay stitch front and back neck edges half inch from the cut edge in direction of arrows. And here I have my picture. So this is for the front and back of the vest and you're not sewing any pieces together. All you're doing is stitching right along the neck edges. And what a stay stitch does, it kind of prevents distortion and stretching of the curved neck edges. And uh, usually we're just gonna keep them in. So you can go ahead and do your back stitching and all that. But I'm gonna go ahead and grab my fabric pieces so I can show you on those actual pieces where you're gonna be stitching. Here I have two of my pieces and I'm ready to do my stay stitching. So what I have here is one piece from my vest front and one piece from my vest back. And how I know this is because on the back it's gonna have the higher neck edge. This is the shoulder seam. This is the armhole. Here on the front we have the armhole. This is the shoulder. And the neck, of course, swoops down further in the front. So I'm just showing you two, but you're definitely gonna do it for all four of the pieces in your fabric and also in the lining. And what they want us to do is stitch a half inch from the edge. So just like you're doing a seam allowance, only you're not sewing any pieces together. You're gonna start from here and you're gonna end here. Again, a back stitch on both sides on your back pieces. You're gonna start here and end here. Back stitch on both sides. So you can go ahead and do a regular stitch if you want, since it's not gonna come out, or you can also do a basting stitch if you want, which is the largest width stitch. Just make sure that you definitely do a back stitch on both sides. So I'm gonna go ahead, grab all my pieces, and then I'm gonna take it to the sewing machine so I can do that. Again, stitching a half inch from this edge inward. When doing your stay stitch, doesn't really matter which, start, which side of the neck edge you start on. And remember, you're gonna be doing this eight times because you have four in your fabric and you have four in the lining. We're ready to move on to step number two. To make darts in front with right sides together, fold the fabric through the center of the dart, bring broken lines and small dots together. On inside, place pins at right angles to broken lines. Stitch the dart from the wide end to the point. So we're gonna, you're gonna be looking at your front of your vest, which is the one that has more of the longer neck edge here. And you're gonna be doing it on the wrong side of the fabric. Now since my fabric markers don't show up very well on my fabric, I'm gonna show you how to do it using the pattern piece. So we have our dart, and again, we're only doing one on each side, because even though there's two here, I only need to do my size. So for medium, all I need to do is I'm looking at the wrong side of my fabric and I'm going to pinch my dart. So this last little dot right here is gonna end up right in the middle of the fold, like this. And then I'm just gonna fold the rest of it in half so there's gonna be lines on each side of the fold. like this. So for me to test, you should have your lines on your fabric as well, that it's actually folded directly in half. What I like to do is I'll get my straight pins. I'll put it through one line on one side, flip it over, and if it comes out on the line on the other side, then it's perfect. This one's a little off, so I could just make a few little minor adjustments, which is hard to do in paper. But once you have it right, once I put this through, and I'm like, yes, that works out perfectly, it went through the line. All I do is finish pinning 
making sure that my straight pin is going perpendicular to the fold line. So it's going straight up and down. That's gonna be the easiest way to do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin from one end all the way to the end of my vest. And I'm gonna do this for my main fabric twice, one on each side of the vest. When sewing your dart, you're gonna go ahead and just do a regular width stitch. Don't forget to back stitch at the bottom of the vest. That's where I'm starting. And I'm actually stitching right along that fa fabric marker line that I had drawn from my pattern. And I'm using that as my guide on where to stitch. So I'm just gonna follow it all the way to the top of the dart, and then I'll show you what we do when we get to the top. I'm getting to the end point or the top of my dart just right where my line is tapering off. When I get to that point, all I'm gonna do is just run my stitch right off my fabric. I'm not doing a back stitch or anything like that. I pull it out, trim my threads, make sure I leave a pretty long tail on my thread here. And I'm gonna do this for each of mine. What we're gonna do is tie a hand knot at the end, but I'm gonna go ahead and finish stitching my darts and then I'll show you how to do that. Here's my dart on one side of the vest. In order to tie a knot right here at the top, you're gonna have your long thread, you're gonna tie it in a loop, then put the end through the loop and pull it. Try to get your knot as close to the edge of the fabric as you can, and just use your scissors to trim it, being careful not to get your knot. You can go ahead and trim these threads down here as well. We don't have to do a hand knot because we did a back stitch. And then you're gonna take your dart and you're gonna press it towards the center of the vest. We have two sides here. One side has a notch, the other side does not. This side without the notch is going to be the center of the vest. So then your dart is gonna be pressed in this direction. And you're gonna do this for both sides of the front. Once you've done that, we can then move on to the next step. And since I'm doing collar D, I can move to step five and skip steps three and four. The first step of step number five is applying fusible interfacing to our collar pieces. So here I have a pair, and you should actually have four total, but we only need a pair of them to start with. And you should also have a pair of the fusible interfacing. So you're going to be having this wrong side facing up, and you're going to take one piece, let's do this one. And on one side of the fusible interfacing, if you run your hands over it, you'll feel little bubbles. Those are the glue bubbles that fuse to the fabric, one side is gonna feel nice and smooth, so that's the right side of the fusible interfacing. So you're gonna take the glue side, the bubble side, and put it to the wrong side of the collar, just like that. And you would do the same one with this one, so this would go over on here. But I'm just gonna do this one first, and once you have it lined up, you're then gonna take your pressing cloth Lay it down very carefully because we don't want to shift it with anything that's under there. You're going to dampen it. Make sure that your iron is pretty hot. And then you're going to put your, your iron down and you'll hear it sizzle. The steam kind of helps up the glue and that's what fuses it to the fabric. Carefully lift up the iron. You have it down there for about five to seven seconds. Move it over to the next spot being careful not to just shift your iron because again, we don't wanna move anything underneath our pressing cloth. We just wanna carefully lay it down until we get each and every area of our collar. So if I lift this up, I can then test to make sure like, oh, I really need to do this section again. But everything else seems pretty good. So once you've done it for this collar and this side of the collar, we're then gonna move on to the rest of step number five. Here's our two collar pieces that we just fused with the fusible interfacing. I just have that side down. So you're gonna take your other pair of collar pieces and you're gonna place them. So it's gonna go right side to right side. So you have your fusible interfacing on the outside and the wrong side of the fabric facing up. Like that. And I'm gonna do the same thing for this one over here. Just like that. 
So what you're going to do next is you're going to pin right along this curved area. So on this side and on this side with your straight pins. And when I'm pinning two pieces together such as this, I like to make sure that I put my straight pins in a perpendicular fashion like this. So it's perpendicular to the edge. And that way as I'm sewing it, it's really easy for me to pull out the pins as I'm sewing. Now what you're going to be doing is we're going to be stitching our regular seam allowance, which in this case is a 5 8 seam allowance. From this end, you're going to come along, and because we're doing the view D collar, when you get to this point where we have this uh, triangle, and this was printed on your pattern piece, so if you haven't done it, you go ahead and transfer it to your fabric. You're going to come here, and then you're just going to follow right along with the triangle, and then continue on with, with your 5 8 inch seam allowance. So it's now going to be stitched down here. It's going to come along, pivot, come up, come down, and then continue on. And that's what's going to create that nice little notched collar look. So I'm going to go ahead and finish pinning both of these things and then take it to the machine so I can go ahead and stitch it. Just doing my 5 8 seam allowance on these collars. Now you're just using a regular width stitch. And I'm just getting to my little triangle here. Once I get to it, a couple more stitches here. Just going to keep my needle down, lift my foot, pivot the fabric, and then sew up to the top of that triangle. Once I get to the top, needle down, foot up, pivot it again, go to the end, and do the same thing and then just continue on until I get to the end there. To finish up step number five, you're going to take your two collar pieces that you have and as you can see I've already started here. On the side that I did my stitching, I'm going to cut my seam allowance in half. So I'm just trimming it all along this edge here and I've already started here. And then I'm going to go along and I'm going to cut these little triangle notches, being careful not to cut into my stitching. The point is just going, well not to the stitching, but just a little bit before the stitching because I really want to be careful that I don't cut into that. Now this area here where you did your triangle shape stitching, you're going to cut a really big notch. Again, being careful. I'm just going to turn this a little way this way so it's easier for me. And now you have that little cutout. So you'd finish doing it the whole rest of the way. And then you're going to flip it in right side out and you're going to press it. And it's going to end up looking like that. So once you've done that, then we can move on to step number six. The first step of direction number six is we're now going to take our pressed collar, which I have here. And you still have two open edges to the collar. We have this side and then we have this top part. So we're going to take it to our machine and we're going to baste this section to this section. So just right along these two open edges. So that'll keep our open edges closed and also even so we can attach it to the front of our vest. When doing a basting stitch, you're just doing the largest width you can do on your machine, the largest width stitch. And you don't need to worry about doing a back stitch. And the seam allowance here doesn't really matter. Um, you can go ahead and do 5 eighths of an inch. Only because this is just a temporary stitch just to hold these two sides together. And it could eventually be taken out. So I'm just going to do it for both sides and then we're going to move on to the rest of step number six. The second part of step number six is on outside pin one collar to neck edge of each vest front matching large dots having raw edges even based. So here I have one part of my vest front and I have the right side facing up. Here's my dart right here, but it just looks like a simple seam line. And I have one side of my collar and you're going to do this for the other side as well. So very easily, right side of vest, lay the collar right on top of this neck edge corner. So what we're going to be doing is you have a dot here at the bottom. This should match the dot here and then the notch here at the top 
should match the notch here. And then you're just gonna line up with the raw edges of both the neck edge of the vest and also with the collar here. Once you've done that, all you're gonna do is just use your straight pins to pin it. And then you're going to back to your machine and you're basting these two pieces together. You can just go ahead and baste over your other basting stitch you have on your collar, that will work. And again, you don't have to do a back stitch. We're just doing a stitch in order to hold these two pieces together. So I'm just gonna do that real fast. And then we get to move on to step number seven. Okay, moving on to step number seven. Now we're gonna be dealing with the welts. Uh, let's see, the first part, apply fusible interfacing to the wrong side of the welt. So I have one of my welts right here. You should have two of them. And on the wrong side of the welt, you're gonna take your interfacing piece and put the glue side to the wrong side and fuse it just like we did with the collar. So I have one already done. And next step is you're gonna put it so it's right side up and you're gonna fold it lengthwise and pin it and then stitch on each of these ends here a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So that's a little bit different than our 5 8 so make sure that you remember to do the difference. So 3 8 on this side, 3 8 on this side. This area here stays open. And then once you're done with that, you're gonna wanna trim it down just a little bit, being careful not to cut your seam, and then we'll move on to step number eight. After I finish doing my stitching on the side, I'm just gonna grab my scissors again, and like with the collar, I'm just gonna trim my seams. Once I've done that, I could go ahead and flip this out right side out, press it, and it'll look like this. This has been pressed. And once I've pressed it on this raw edge here that's opened, this edge here, I'm then gonna take it to my machine and I'm gonna base 3 eighths of an inch away from this edge, which I've already done here. Once you've done that, we can move to the second part of step eight, which is attaching our welts to the front of our vest. On outside, pin welt to each vest front, placing basting along welt line, matching small and large dots, stitch along basting, trim close to stitching. So here is one of my vest fronts, and I have the right side facing up, and here is my welt line. This was on your pattern piece, so you should have transferred it to your fabric piece by this time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take my welt, and what I'm gonna do is match the large dot on my welt with the large dot on my vest and the small dot with the small dot. This line here should line up with your basting stitch that you had done before. So the raw edge of the welt will actually be taller or above this welting line on the vest. So everything should just line up. And once you've done that, you're going to pin it in place Take it to your sewing machine and stitch right along your basting stitch. You're just doing a regular width stitch and you go right along the basting stitch. Don't forget to back stitch. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and trim this extra part that's on your welt. And uh, you could trim it pretty close, maybe leave about an eighth to a quarter of an inch because what we're gonna do next is flip this up. So we don't want a lot of extra fabric that's gonna be underneath our welt. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish pinning this and then stitch both my vests in this fashion and then we'll move on to step number nine. Step nine, turn welt up, press, top stitch or slip stitch ends into place. So here's my welt and I went ahead and trimmed that excess that was on the welt side. And I'm gonna go ahead and press this up so it looks like that. Take a couple of straight pins, pin the sides. So now it's gonna be flat, just like that. And they give you a choice at this point. You can either slip stitch or top stitch the edges here. And this part here is gonna stay open, just like a little mini pocket. I'm gonna actually top stitch, so I'm gonna take it to my machine and I'll show you how I go about in doing that. When sewing a top stitch, I'm sewing on the welt 
and sewing as close to the edge as I can go. It's just a regular with stitch. Don't forget to back stitch. And I just want to make sure I don't go onto the vest itself. So just the weld. So I'm going to do this for each side of my weld. Okay, we're moving on to step number 10. Stitch center back seam of vest back from small dot to neck edge. Back stitch at small dot to reinforce the seam. So we're just going to do the first part and then we'll move on to the second part of 10. So now we're going to be working with the vest back. I have my two pieces here and you'll see they have the triple notch right here. Here are the armholes and we're looking at the right sides of the vest. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this part laid on top of this vest back matching up these edges here. So it's going to match up at the top, triple notch, and this bottom part where you should have a dot here. So I'm going to line up the raw edges. Move this over so it's more centered. Use my straight pins to pin this whole area right here and you're going to stitch a regular seam allowance 5 8 inch stitch back stitching starting at the top coming along here and stopping when you get to your dot here on your vest. Make sure to back stitch here because we definitely want this to be reinforced. So once you finish stitching that, then you're going to take it to your iron and you're going to press the seam open. Here's the back of my vest. Now I've went ahead and stitched that center seam and pressed my seams open. I have the right side facing up. And what we're going to do is now match the front of our vest at these shoulder seams up here of the back of the vest. So let me just grab one front. So the side that has your collar and the welt, that is the right side of the front. So we're going to flip it over so the right side of the back is with the right side of the front and match the shoulder seam of the front with the shoulder seam of the back, like that. And you know which one to put on what side because the collar should be towards the center of the vest. And you also have the armhole here on the front and the armhole here in the back. So once I have that, I'm going to grab my straight pins, pin the top, lining up the raw edges, also matching the shoulder notches we have here at the top. So I'm going to grab my other one too. And I would just do the same thing on this side as well. Once these are both pinned, you're then going to take it to your machine and do your regular seam allowance and press your seams open. We're now going to be moving on to step number 11. So we're going to be creating the belt that's going to go on the back of the vest. If you look at the pattern piece, you'll see a series of marks here at the end. We have two small circles and then a big circle in the middle. And then we have this broken line right here, which is our stitching line. So these dots down here at the end, you definitely want to transfer them to both of your pieces. There should be two belts that you have cut out. This dotted line, you're only going to transfer to one of the pieces. So as you can see here, I have my mark here, and then I have my three circles. And then I have another one where I just have the three circles and I don't have a line. This is going to be the left side of the belt. This is going to be the right side of the belt. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do the right one first. I'm going to flip it over. I'm going to fold it lengthwise. So the right side of the fabric is going to be on the inside. And then I'm going to pin all along this long edge up here. Now what we're going to do when we stitch this is you're going to do a 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and you're going to stitch all along the top here but when you get to the stitching line you're then going to pivot your machine and stitch right along that line so it's going to be a little shorter than the left side of the belt so i'm going to finish pinning this i'll just pin right there so i know where to stop and don't forget to back stitch. You're just doing a regular stitch. Once you finish stitching this, you're then going to trim off all this so you have maybe about a quarter of an inch left. For the left side, just as you did with the right side, you're going to fold it in half lengthwise with the right side on the inside. 
and pin all along here and here. So just like the right one, we're going to do a 3 8 inch seam allowance and you're going to stitch from here, pivot to the end here. This side with the dots on both the left belt and the right belt is going to remain open because this is where we're going to flip the whole thing right side out. So I'm going to go ahead and pin it and then stitch it at my machine. Once you stitched your belt, what you're going to do is cut the corners, like I have a corner right here, and I'm just doing this on the closed end, not on the open end. And then I could go ahead and trim those seams like that. And um, I'll do this part later. After I finish doing it, I'm going to turn the whole thing right side out and I'm going to press it flat. And I have my right belt, this is the right side of the belt, right here. So once you have that done, uh, step 12, we're going to attach the buckle. Here's my buckle right here. This is the top of the buckle, the bottom of the buckle. This is the finished edge of my right side of my belt and the open edge. I'm going to take the finished edge. I'm going to go underneath the buckle, come up through the left side of the buckle and down on the right side. This part that you just pulled through of the belt, you're going to overlap it with the bottom part of the belt by an inch. So I'm going to get my sewing gauge, measure it to it's about an inch. That looks pretty good. You could go ahead and stick a pin in this part and then take it to your machine and stitch right along the edge. So then the finished edge of the belt gets attached to this bottom part of the belt right here. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Again, I'm just going to turn this right side out and press it nice and flat. And then we're going to get ready attaching both these sides of the belt to the back of the vest. Step 13 is all about attaching the belt to the back of the vest. And I have the back of the vest with the right side facing up. And you'll notice that we have marks right here on either side of the seam. These were also on the pattern piece, so these should be transferred to the fabric if you haven't already done so. This is going to be the placement of each side of the belt. So I'm going to take the right side of the belt, this is the one with the buckle, and I have it so the wrong side of the belt is facing up. This is the one where we just folded it over, you can see the back side of the buckle, and I'm going to lay it so my marks on my belt are going to match up the marks that are on the vest. So I have a big circle, small circle, big circle, small circle, and I'm just going to line them up like that and I'm going to pin it. And I'm going to do the same thing with my left belt. So the, the finished edge is going to go away, the raw edge is going to line up with the marks and I'm going to pin it. Then I'm going to take this to my sewing machine and what I'm going to stitch is the raw edge here just between the, the marks here. So the big circle to the small circle. So it's not completely on the edge. It looks like it's about 3 8 of an inch away and I'm going to do that on both sides. Just as we did with the welt, once you did the, do the stitch, you're then going to trim it close to your seam because we're going to flip it over like this and then restitch it again on top. So that way the belt's going to stay nice and flat here and we're not going to see as much of this raw edge that's underneath. So that's just a nice handy way to hide that stuff and look, make it look a little bit more finished. So I'm going to take it to my machine so I can go ahead and do that step and we can move on. To finish with step 13, after you stitch your belt to the back and you trim a little bit off the end here, so I left it maybe about a quarter of an inch seam allowance, you're going to take your belt, you're going to flip it over that raw edge, so it's going to be hidden, and then you're going to stitch a quarter of an inch away from the edge of the fold here. And that's going to complete putting in our belts. With step 14, we're now going to start working with the lining of our vest. The first thing is we need to apply the interfacing to the front vest of the lining. So here I have one of them, there should be two, and I have my interfacing. So I'm going to attach the interfacing to the wrong side of the vest. So it goes bubble side to wrong side. 
And just like we did before, you're going to apply the fusible interfacing as we did with the collar and with the welt. The only thing they recommend is you cut the corners of the interfacing, not of the fabric, just the interfacing. And you can cut it so it's not going into the seam allowance. So once you've done that, and I have a sample here that I've done, this is the other side. We're basically going to retrace some of the steps that we did before with the fabric. So the first thing you need to do is your dart, which I've done here. So the fold of the dart is on the side of the interfacing, and then you just stitch along your line again, and don't forget you trail off at the top of the dart, and then you hand tie the knot, cut it off, cut off the threads, pressing the dart toward the center of the vest, and again, that's the side that does not have a notch such as the notch that's on this side. So once you've done both of those steps, then we can move on to doing the center back seam of the vest lining back. Then, just as you did with your fabric pieces, you're gonna take both sides of your back vest, and this is in the lining. I have right sides facing up. I'm gonna flip this over so they'll line right on top of each other, lining up these raw edges, the triple notch, the top of the vest, and the bottom of the vest, just like this. And then, just as I did before, I'm going to pin all along this edge and then sew with my regular stitch seam allowance, the 5 8 inch seam allowance, from the top to your mark which you should have transferred from your pattern piece. Don't forget to backstitch on both ends. Once you did your center back seam, you're gonna have your vest facing up and don't forget to press your seams open. And then you're gonna take each side of the vest front, and this is with the lining with the interfacing and the dart done, and match up the top of the shoulder seam. So I'm doing this one and this side. Then just as before, I'm going to pin right across here, this top shoulder seam on this side and this side, and I'm gonna stitch along the same area, the 5 8 inch seam allowance, and then press my seams open. Okay, so we're continuing on with step 14, and now we've got to the best part of all, putting it all together. So here I have my lining, and it's looking like the other part of my vest with the regular outside fabric. I have the back, with the front attached here at the top and I just spread it all out and it's right side facing up. So here's my center seam. Now I'm gonna take the outer shell with my nice little straight fabric here and I'm gonna turn it so it is wrong side facing up and I'm gonna be matching this vest with the lining. So I'm just gonna lay it all out right side to right side and it should line up pretty well. It's really big so I'm trying to do this carefully without moving everything. All right so I'll fix that part later. All right so at this point what you're going to want to do is pin both pieces together. You're going to line up the raw edges match the center seam or any seams that you have and also you're going to want to match the darts which you have on the front parts there. So I'm going to go ahead pin all the way around matching everything up and then we're going to talk about where we're going to stitch in order to stitch both of these pieces together. All right I have my two pieces pinned together all the way around so I have the fabric on top and the lining underneath. So what we're going to do next is we're gonna start sewing all the way around the vest, except for there are four spots we're not gonna stitch. And that's gonna be the sides that have a notch, such as this side, this side, this side, and this side up here. So these sides are going to remain open. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove my straight pins. So that'll be a reminder to me that I'm not gonna be stitching in that area. So when you're stitching around, there's gonna be a lot of starts and stops. For instance, at this bottom, we're gonna start here, and you're just gonna do a regular 5 8 inch seam allowance with back stitches on both sides. So we'll start here, we'll stitch, 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 and then we'll stop 
when we get to our mark that was at the bottom of our center seam here on the back of the vest. So along here, go up, stop, back stitch, cut your threads. Then we're actually going to start on this side, back stitch, stitch down, pivot, come here, stop. This side remains open. We'll start here, go around the armhole, and then stop here. Same thing on this side. Start here, around the armhole, stop here. This side remains open. For the longest continuous stitch is going to be actually the front of the vest. So you're going to start here. We're going to go up, around the neck hole, all the way around here, up here, and then stop right here. So this is going to remain open, 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 and open. So now that we know exactly where we're going to sew, let's get to our sewing machine, stitch it up, and then we're going to get ready for turning the whole thing right side out. After you finish sewing, you're going to want to trim all your seams and clip the corners. For any areas that are curved, such as the armholes or the neckline, you're also going to want to clip these notches. Once you've done that, you've completed step 14. Okay, did everyone make it through step 14? That was a long one. So let's move to step 15, our best part, turning the whole thing right side out. So you're going to go through one of your openings. I like doing it through the vest. And I'm just going to reach through and start pulling my pieces right side out. Once everything is right side out, you can go ahead and press it at your ironing board. We're now ready to move on to step 16. So here's my vest turned right side out and pressed. And I have it inside out, so the outside of the vest is inside and the line is on the outside. And what I'm going to do is now I'm going to worry about the side seams here because they're still open and obviously we can't leave them open. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the lining out of the way. I'm going to take the fabric pieces, which are right sides together, and I'm going to pin all along this edge here because we're going to do a side seam. So it's going to be a regular 5 8 seam. Now the one thing that we have to do, not only are we, now you can see I'm just pinning the fabric, this lining and this lining is staying out of it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the lining and pin about an inch above the armhole seam. So you're going one inch into the lining up here and then the bottom of the vest, you're also going to go one inch into the lining. So I'm going to pin here, one inch into the lining, through my regular outside fabric, and then stop one inch at the top, which is also on the lining. So it's going to be a little difficult because you're going to have to keep pulling the lining out of the way here on the top and on the bottom. So you can make sure that you're only pinning these two layers together. But once you do that, then the side seam is going to be closed and then we're just going to worry about this lining here. We're going to finish with step 16, which is slip stitching this. So I'm going to go ahead, pin both sides, so this side and the other side, doing that same method. Um, go ahead and stitch my seam allowance on it, press it open, and then we'll worry about the slip stitch. Since we stitched one inch into the lining on each side, the rest of the opening should fold under. If not, you can tuck each side under about 5 eighths of an inch, just like our seam allowance. Or what I like to do is pinch the seam between my finger and the end and pull it. And you'll see it kind of creases right there. So I'm going to go ahead, stick a straight pin, and then grab my needle and thread, which I already have knotted on one end. And we're going to do a slip stitch in order to close this opening. So what you're going to do is you're going to grab a little bit of one side, and I like to do it right on the inside fold. Tuck my knot into that hole. And then I'm going to pinch it between my fingers like that. Grab a little bit of the fold on the other side. Tuck that knot back in there and then grab the first side again. So I'm just grabbing a little bit of fabric from each side, zigzagging between the two sides, pulling as I go until the hole is closed. So I'm going to do this for both sides and then our side seams will be complete and we can move on to the last part of making our vest. 
we're ready to do step 18, which is doing the buttonholes on our vest. So what you're gonna need is the button guide, which I have here. Just make sure you cut out the right one. It's pattern number seven, but there's different sizes under here. It says M for medium, and there's several of them. So just make sure you cut out the right one. So I'm doing this on the left side of the vest, and I'm just gonna take my button guide, place it right alongside. Should only be able to fit one way, like that. And you'll see these little lines, there should be four of them. These are the button holes that we're gonna be transferring to our vest. So what I'm gonna do, just like I do my other marks, I'm gonna get two straight pins. I'm gonna stick it through one end of the buttonhole and then stick it on the other side. And of course, you're doing this on the right side of the vest, grabbing my fabric marker. I'm gonna make a mark right where my pin is coming through into the fabric. And then once I have that marked, I'm just gonna remove this for this one buttonhole. I'm gonna draw a line connecting them. And then I can draw a line just like they do on their paper on the end. So I know where to start and to stop my, bu my buttonhole. Once you uh, have all four of those on there, then you can go ahead and take it to your machine and we'll create the buttonhole. The first thing you need to do when doing a buttonhole on your machine is change your foot. Yours may look differently than mine. Mine has one long skinny foot which is used to help guide the side of the buttonhole so I can make sure I'm keeping them straight. The other thing is it's a good idea to practice at least a couple of times before doing it on your garment. I always like to practice even though I've done them several times. So we're gonna get ready to do it and everybody's machine is different. Some will have buttons like mine, others will have dials which you turn the dial to get the different parts of the buttonhole. The parts of the buttonhole are the ends and then the side of the buttonhole. So I'm at one end of my line here and I'm gonna do the end of the buttonhole. And then once I'm done with that, I'm gonna move to the side So now I'm gonna do the side of the buttonhole. And if you're not quite sure if you're getting to the end, what I like to do is just put my needle down, lift my foot, and then I can see how much further I have to go. I don't really have to go that much further. So once I get to the end, put my needle down, lift my foot, rotate the fabric. So now I'm gonna do the end on this side of the buttonhole. Okay, and now I'm just gonna do the other side. If your sewing machine doesn't have a buttonhole stitch, you can always make a buttonhole by hand. It takes a little bit longer, but it'll work. And we actually have a tutorial on our website. It's called the Buttonhole Hand Stitch, and I'll show you exactly how to make a buttonhole by hand. So once I reach the end, I just go down a couple of times through the end, and then that's it. I have a completed buttonhole. The next step is to cut our buttonholes open. And you can use your scissors, just fold the buttonhole in half and carefully cut down the middle. You wanna be very careful not to cut your threads. You can also use thread cutters to get that because they're a little bit smaller. If you have this little handy button cutter, you can also use that. It comes with a wooden block, you put it underneath and then you just press directly in the middle. This is probably the best investment you can make if you make a lot of buttonholes. I've already done one up here on top. As you can see, it's open and just take your button, put it through it to test it and make sure it works. Next, we're gonna be working on the placement of our buttons. You'll need the buttonhole guide again for this next step. So remember this piece? You'll notice there's a dotted line that goes down one side. If you line this up, you can go ahead and transfer this line to your left side of the vest. Then flip it over and do the same on the right side of the vest. Once you have that, you wanna overlap the two lines so they're all lined up. So now it should be centered. You take your fabric marker, carefully open up your buttonhole 
just make a mark right in the center of it and it's right there on the right side so that is where I'm going to sew on my button and I'm going to show you how to do that in the next step using the sewing machine. When I'm using the sewing machine in order to stitch on a button the first thing I do is I remove the foot these feed dog here need to go down because we don't want the fabric to go through the machine. We want it to stay stationary. My little dial is underneath the machine. See those just went down. And then you need to switch to a zigzag stitch. I'm going to take this. There's my dot right there, the mark I made. and I'm going to put the button right on top of it. Carefully position it underneath the foot. Bring this down. It should go right on top of the button. Now if yours doesn't go all the way down, you can hold it with your fingers. Just be extremely careful. Nobody's allowed to stitch through their finger. Alright, so now I'm going to carefully just pull this by hand just to make sure it's going through the holes. Once I know it's going through okay, I can go ahead and step on my foot pedal. Go through there a few times till it's secured. Then I'm going to lift this up, move it down, and do the same thing. Sometimes you have to make adjustments to uh, your zigzag stitch length or just move the button over a little bit to make sure it's going to go through the holes. So that looks good. So I'm going to go through it some more. And that's it. That's how easy it is to put on a button with a machine. I mean, it only takes a few seconds. And so I'm going to finish doing the other ones. If you want to sew it on by hand, you can check out our tutorial on our website, professorpincushion.com. And we have a flat button tutorial, which will show you, again, how to do it on the machine and also how to do it by hand. The only thing left to do at this point is to remove any fabric markers you have or basting stitches that you see on your vest. Other than that, it's complete and ready to go. Again, this is Simplicity Pattern 4762. Underneath our vest, you can see a very handsome tie, which can also be found in the same envelope. You can also find this tutorial on our website. So good luck and have fun making one of your own.